Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Dakota, and we are entering the woods. The top of Chihuahua is a recreational park. Well, the whole thing is, but um, there are some very quiet spots you can get to if you're willing to walk to the back end of the park, which is where we're going today. And um, we may also stop at a favorite little fishing hole of mine that uh, I like to do passive fishing at, which is what we'll be talking about today. Hopefully doing, depending on the uh, amount of people out here. It seems pretty low because it's about to rain. And we'll also be testing the one wind poncho I purchased. Um, I'm not one of those people that stops doing what I'm doing in the rain. I kind of like to just throw a poncho on and keep doing whatever it was I was doing within reason. I'm trying to keep y'all here. But this is what we're working with today. That whole thing... And I do see movement in the water, so looks like we're going to have a good time. Stay tuned. Guys, I can't tell you how beautiful of a day it is out here. Now, this is more or less my type of looking with this, gray, this grayish water. And I'm going to tell you a little secret about fishing. And uh, I've never thought to articulate it before. But um, you can smell fish. When you're going along a creek bed, if you can't see any action up close they're probably down deep but if you're coming up to a, a river bed or whatever or, or you know the riverside if you smell fish it's pan fish are breeding right now and what i'm getting at is if you smell fish that's probably what it is it feels so good out here but i will tell you this is one of those temperatures where if you were to get wet right now and uh get cold you could be hypothermic and we're we're technically in the summer months um it's may so well excuse me we're at the end of the spring it's still beautiful out look at this look at that squirrel oh but you can't see it dang it i've got to be careful out here though there is a lot of uh snakes out it's breeding season for snakes right now so you'll see them all over the place traveling to the ends of the world to uh, get some nookie. <laughs> um, let's look in here real quick. See what we got going on. Good spot as any to look. Now I highly doubt there's going to be fish back this way except for maybe little bugs. Little buggers. But we'll look. We're going to wrap all the way down around there to a spot that not a lot of people go. And I'm going to show you all some passive fishing techniques. And uh, I don't see any fish right here. I was going to do it right here. This is one of my favorite spots to do it, but they're not here right now. So let's keep moving. All right, y'all. So I wanted to talk about something here in the south at minimum. Most woodlands, this is a good spot for an ambush predator to sit and wait. They could be up in that log, they could be on the other side, on either adjacent end, okay? Now, I don't personally have a walking stick with me today. And I have already kind of looked this place over a little ways. But I wanted to go ahead and show y'all some spots that you really need to start looking for. You've got cloud cover, and you can kind of see that there's an animal trail right there. If I was a snake and I was looking to get a, to get a good snack, I'd be around here. So really make sure before you cross over this log that it's what you want to do. Because if you're far out into the woods, I mean, there's a road over here for me at the moment until we get to the other side of the uh, mountain over there. Well, that's a hill to some of y'all. But long story short, I want to make sure that the decisions you're making with these are not going to be your last. Because if you get bit and you got to walk up too far, you're going to get hurt. Like, look, there you go. The snake just ran off right there. i got to be very careful. I've got some uh, really slippery mud down here. You can fall and hurt yourself, break your hip. Um, <clears throat> which brings me to my next point. You need to figure out what hip you're going to fall on and keep that hip completely empty and if it's not empty it needs to be something that's not going to cause you any damage at all if you get hurt 
But anyway, you really, 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 really want to make sure that what you're doing is safe and uh, and your fail safes are in place like that hip. Never put anything in the small of your back. You could break your back. And I don't know about you, but if you go into the woods as far as I do, getting out with a broken back is going to be, dare I say, along the lines of lone survivor. You're just going to have to crawl. And uh, I don't think the average American is physically up to that right now. So consider that. Wow. Look at that. Now, we'll tell you. That's going to become a bass paradise here in a little while. Once those baby fish find it. The bass will be able to feed right there. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's learn something real quick. You can kind of tell this is moving water. You see that little piece running through? That water moved down that way. Now look at how those trees are leaned one direction. Look at how these trees are not. Everything up to here is pushed over, okay? You can tell that when it rains, the flood line is right here on an average rain. Okay, look at that. You see how it wiped everything out, okay? Why is this important? On a regular day, I would go to that creek bed over there, and I would sit there, and I would enjoy my day, but it's about to rain soon. And if the rain comes from that direction, it's going to fill that side of the water up and bring it on down this way quite rapidly, and I might die. Maybe not die in this instance, but I'll be in a bad way. Don't put yourself in a predicament that you can't get yourself out of with ease. Realistically, just don't put yourself in a predicament. But, that being said, I wanted y'all to see that. I wanted y'all to look at that water line right there with me. See it? How everything is pushed over here and here. It's pushed that way. And the water is running that way. We can easily assume that water is going to come down here and flood. This is a flood zone. we got to be careful. We want to stay higher. Stay tuned with me, guys. Wow, I finally made it to a spot that I haven't seen footprints in in a week. And this is what people are missing. Nothing but nature and my voice because I'm talking over it. I love Alabama. I love the nature it provides. I love humanity, but sometimes a lack thereof is healing for the soul. Let's get set up.
All right, guys. So we got that chair set up, getting a little warm out, and uh, I wanted to talk to you about hanging pots. Now, when you want to do something like hang a pot, a lot of people think, okay, you need a bushcraft so and so, or you need a uh, one of those Pathfinder um, hanging kits. Well. That's not necessarily true, and um, I'm about to get into why that is really just not the truth here in a moment after I get all of this nasty sand off me. What you're going to need is something to cut with, a Y branch of some type, and for the pot I have it doesn't need to be a heavy one, so I got a Y branch, and well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off at a relatively useful distance here I'm about to show you I need to be able to just snap it off Hold on. it's still kind of live wood so I gotta kind of pretty it up now you don't need a bushcraft shawl to do this you can use your pocket saw on your if you have a multi-tool and it has a saw on it you will probably be better off at this very moment to do such a thing alright sweet so about that far. If you want to see my hand with it, you know, there you go. Give yourself some space, some real estate, if you will. And then the fire size that you're going to have is also going to be dependent. My fire is not going to be very big, so I'm going to stop about right here from the Y, the Y being here. So if you look at that, that's going to be there. I'm probably going to need about that much. I'll go ahead and get that going. Boom diggity, all right? Now we have our pot hanger handle, or a little hook if you will. The next step you're going to want to do is you're going to want to define where you want your pot hanger really, like where your pot to hang. I like my pot to hang about right here on these systems in this area. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carve what is known as a seven notch inside of my stick. How do I do that? Well, first you put a stopper cut, what I call it, with your knife or a saw blade right here, wherever you want to go, and then you just start carving at an angle to that stop notch that you just put in. You don't want to shave off the tip of the actual stop notch itself. You really want it to exist. And it doesn't have to be very drastic unless you have like a Pathfinder bowl or one of those um, mess kits that Blackie has. It's got a very wide, a thick veil. But the one I'm using today does not, so this little notch will do for me. Alright. Now, the next controversial thing I'm going to do here in the woods is I'm going to use some paracord for such a simple task as cutting, or excuse me, as making my actual pot hanger. Now, I'm going to use this little stick and I'm going to basically just, you know, create it right here. It's going to look like that. I'm going to, I'm going to lash that on there real quick. And it's going to go on to, hopefully I can move this without everything falling, so stand by. Got a really crappy way of doing all this. <laughs> um, hopefully, oh, we're going to put it on that stick right there. So. We're going to put it on that stick right there, which is then going to have a fire by it. And we're on sand right now, so you're going to have to stand by with me. Or, if you'd like to say, sand by. <laughs> Big old monster me, I am. So let's start shifting our body over that way to do some work on that. Again, I'm working on sand so these bushcraft chairs that I was doing I had to do a lot of moving around so this is, sand is not this bushcraft chair's best friend by any means and the flies are moving in too so you've got to understand we got flies down here inside and they don't care about you or what you're doing or who you are they will come out here and me. now I hope you can see this stick here I'm going to shift you down a little bit so you can kind of see what we're doing 
We're going to take this little Y branch and we're going to put it on our pot hanger. And yes, I know it's dangly. Trust me on this. Um, and we want to find out where it's going to sit. About right there. Because this is going to cause friction. So you want to take this little, the little across branch stick and put it at the top so that it catches itself. Like so. It's going to do that. When I let it go, it all falls away, right? Well, what if I told you we could just make this happen right here? And um, I will tell you that on the particular branch that I have in the ground, I'm going to have to press it up. You're going to want to skin this branch if you have kind of like an oak or, or a, very, uh, a very robust wood. So let's get that done real quick. I want to show you what I'm talking about. As you can see here, I just have some downed wood that I found. And it's very mossy and everything. So let's clean it up and get all these knots off of it. If you have a um, small hatchet like I normally bring with me, which I did not today, you can quickly make easy work of these. Or you can just use your knife, which is what I'm doing. Um, the Kephart knife is very robust. It's just kind of, it's a little outclassed right now in terms of it's what I'm using it for. But it still does the job, for example, I sit here, I can get these bigger, these little knots off of here. Now, you also want to think about your height, how, how big of a fire you're going to have. I'm about to have a very small one, it's 80 degrees out now, it's the middle of the day. This morning it felt great when we started the video. But the sun has cleared up, as you can see, or the skies have cleared up and the sun has come out to play. So, it's nice and toasty right here. And um, we've got a beautiful view of the riverside here, or the creek side, if you want to call it a creek, whatever it is to you. And um, because I'm in sand, I typically like to dig down and then bury this, which is what I'm getting ready to do next. It also helps you, um, it also helps you in the sense of having, like any, if the, like, the trees around here are growing through the sand, kind of find the, the, the trees and make sure that you don't have that problem. Now I'm going to start mine below this knot here, so I want to make sure that I can cover that knot when it comes down to it by simply doing this here. And then when I pick it up, yeah, so that's about where I want to be. Um, I'm not going to pretty this joker up in a way, shape, or form. I'm just going to get it on there. And how I'm going to do that is on one side of my V, I'm going to tie a single or a half hitch, excuse me, because this is not holding a lot of weight on this particular set. I've got my half hitch on there. Make sure I get it all the way through. Get it nice and tight. And once you do your half hitch, you really want to make sure that you're but it's going to stay, because if it doesn't stay, then your pot's going to fall in the water or in the fire along with all of your food. And that's not really fun. That's not how I know. I might screw around and do a double hit, uh, double half in the tree. Yeah, I should going to get the double. Try to be nice, but... Ooh. I want to wait unless I do a better half hitch here for one moment. Um, I normally do this with bank line, by the way. I wanted to state that. But I left the bank line in the car this morning. Um, I ended up using the bank line for some passive fishing traps that I was setting for myself uh, elsewhere, if you will. And um, I have those set cart somewhere else. Tighten down, make sure you can cooperate with us, and go from here. Alright, now, you want to wrap, let's see if I can get you in here. The simplest way to do this with a light amount of cordage is you want to wrap this over one time here, just like so, and then you're going to want to wrap it over, bring it across, like so, you've got to wrap it over and on itself, and then you want to wrap it here, 
like so. And again, this isn't going to look pretty, and uh, it's not very professional looking. Mostly because I'm only cooking, what, I think some liters? And then I'm throwing all this away. So I don't even really want to spend a lot of time with it. I just need it to physically do its job. See, it doesn't even have to look pretty. I'll make it look ugly for y'all. And uh, in a future video, I'll show you how to make this look pretty. But here we go. You slide this over the top like so. Get it down where you want it. And now you have a pot hanger. So let's just say for sake of argument, the pot is in the fire here. Well, now you can just twist it out. Twist it in. Twist it out. Twist it in, twist it out, and you're not going to burn your hands. Now, you're probably wondering why I need a pot hanger for such a small fire. I really don't. I just felt like building one um, for the sake of the video. And um, I had a blast trying to make it with as little material as possible. I normally, like I said, use all of the bank line and make it look real pretty. Uh, Jake Trent does a great video of how to do this and make it look nice um, and you should probably go check that out now that's a pot hanger idea and we're really like I said I'm really doing this to show you that you don't need a bedroll cooker and this is a premise idea I'm gonna make a much more pretty one later but this is a premise idea to something that's coming soon to the channel that I think you will all love um, so stay tuned for it, I guess, to say, to say the least. I think you're going to enjoy it, so stick around, and you'll see it. But for today, we're going to use the Hellfire Bushcraft kit, because we're in the sand. We're just going to dig a pit here, and uh, set our... We're basically going to make our fire. Look at this rock. Cool. Little river rock. <laughs> we're going to use that at the bottom, so that our firewood has something nice and dry to exist on, if you will. Alright. I'll pick you up and show you what's going on here. But first, I'm going to go ahead and set the bushcraft grill on there and get this little fire going. So our bushcraft grate will sit across it like this. Alright, so we've got our bushcraft grate across here. Now, why is this important? Because we can set our stuff on top of the grate and let the cooking happen underground where the fire is not visible to everybody, but you don't have to dig a hole to coat a whole fire. You put your hole down there and you dig yourself a little slot to the right, and right here you just have a straight funnel of heat that that stuff's going to pop straight up. If you really wanted to, um, you could be cooking something on this side, maybe widen this out, you have space, and then have your pot going over here and have your other stuff going here with this pot hanger that I was just talking about. Uh, this is actually going to end up being firewood for me and um, I wanted to just simply before I before I made it into firewood show you a concept that will be making it to the channel. Um, but what you're going to do with this one here is you can just set your bushcraft grill on the bare ground flat across and you can essentially enjoy a little hand warmer fire right here. You just don't need a big fire and this is going to give it all the air it's ever going to need especially if you set it in line with the wind like I have here. The wind kind of follows the uh, stream here and it's going to just blow right in there and give it the oxygen it needs from this direction. Whoop. And uh, it's going to go down in there. So let's get this going. Um, I did bring a pot that an old friend gave me, Big Red. It's a wider pot than the newer models that come out. And um, I got to say... I deeply enjoy its existence, um, for lack of a better way to say it. Um, so, let me get back on this. Oh, let me see if this chair will allow me to be comfortable for five seconds. Um, bushcraft chairs, by the way, they do not do well in the sand, at least not for me. I'm discovering that today. Um, I used to just not bring a chair. I used to bring a sit pad, but I got a chair from OPSG Products. And I'm trying it out. So. I'll let you know how I feel about it once I find solid ground to set in it. Sit in it in. But let's get this fire going.
right y'all <clears throat> so again in the event that I couldn't bring any I couldn't bring a fire to, to fruition because of people being around or whatever I brought some of this I have one going as you can see the smoke right here um, but what I was going to say is my good friend Big Red he had a pot hanging up and um, it ain't like the coolest thing on the planet but I've always admired it because it's an older uh, mess kit. It's a little bit wider and it's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit wider. A tad bit deeper than the stuff you buy nowadays at Walmart. What I got in here is just a side that I like to carry as a main course in the woods. And uh, it is cheddar broccoli. So let's go ahead and get ourselves some water boiling here in our old pot here, in our old Big Red Special. And for those of you wondering um, why I didn't use the pot hanger, it's not because it sucked, it's just because I brought the bushcraft grate. And I wanted to show you that in the event that I didn't bring the grate, I had a pot hanger. Got that fire stoked up with some uh, beautiful water that, you know, it's impossible to find water. <laughs> um, I will tell you one thing that I didn't really think about much until recently. And that's making a pot hanger or a little pot grabber, if you do. And it's not hard to do because really you can just find a stick like this and then be able to grab your pot off the little baby fire, which is what I normally do. That's what I'm going to end up doing today. Um, but the sand is just everywhere, y'all. But anyway. I wanted to show you the pot hanger idea in the event that you didn't have a bushcraft grate because I've noticed that some of you in the comments were like, hey man, I don't have a bushcraft grate um, and I feel like it's becoming more of a prerequisite nowadays. It's not. I didn't get my bushcraft grate until this year. Uh, my wife got it for me. And for all the years prior to that, I had nothing but the tools I make out in the woods. I don't always make them pretty because y'all aren't always watching. As long as they function, that's all I care about. And uh, I got some lemonade here. Gonna throw that in there. It's got some. It's got a extra little bit of um, electrolytes in there because I do get dehydrated quite easily, and uh, I don't want to do that to myself. So let's go ahead and get some lemonade in my body. And y'all, just like that, I made lemonade in the field. I can do that with sweet tea. You can do that with fruit drinks. And they really do brighten up the uh, workspace, if you will, having that little bit of uh, sweetness or tanginess, whatever you're into. Mio probably makes it. Oh, yeah. Now, the fire seems to want me to be snuffed out, and I don't know why I didn't do nothing to it. I find that to be kind of rude, personally, but it's okay. I accept this little fire for who it is. It's just inconsiderate, but still, I do not accept it for who it is. Trying to keep the little baby going here. And, uh, using all the little sticks around me, I didn't um, feel the need to grab any type of sticks for the fire because there's just a whole bunch laying around here. And um, the last thing you really want to do is start tearing up the forest, trying to get a fire going when you have what you need in front of you. Um, I like to just use the little bits and bobbles on the ground 
not because I'm lazy, but because I don't see the value in wasting my little bit of time in the woods picking up firewood for five hours. And uh, I mitigate that by doing what I'm doing now. Let's see if we can get all this in here. Seems like a lot of not a lunch, if you ask me. Let's see what we can do. Alright, sweet. We're gonna let that do its thing and uh, cook real slow. And uh, there should be some rain coming in here in a little bit, but um <clears throat> I wanted to give somebody a very ultra high speed shout out um, for sending me a good little bit of pipes. I got four pipes from you and one is on the way. Alex from Pennsylvania, my friend, thank you so much. Um, we've become good smoke buddies, Alex and I. And uh, my favorite pipe this far has been this little Missouri Mersham. And, um, I'm going to get him lit up here in a moment while I'm waiting for, for lunch. And uh, we're going to talk. And as soon as it starts raining, we'll be able to start trying out the, uh, the brand new um, One Wind <clears throat> Poncho, which I plan to walk my two-mile hike back out in the rain on purpose, of course, to see how well it does, see how it covers me. And I do have dry clothes in the car in the event that I get you know, drenched for some reason, which I don't think I will. I think Missouri, excuse me, I think, um, I think they did a good job. I'm not really worried too much about it. But, uh, now that we are back out in the woods, I wanted to take a minute to address a few things from the previous video. Nothing I'm mad about or anything. More or less, I'm just surprised. So I'm packing this pipe here. I'm going to get it going in a moment. Get this uh, smoke from the fire down here that we can first. All right, good. Enough of all that. Enough of all that jingle jangle. Go away. Um, some housekeeping that I really, really think needs to go on. If you don't get out in the woods at all, never been there, never done that, I encourage you to watch my channel. If you've been out here for a while, I also still encourage you to watch my channel. See, some of the other channels require themselves to make the most beautiful knots on the planet. Now, when I go out with people in front of them and they're there for a weekend, I'll do good jobs. I'll, uh, I'll, make, my, I'll make my campsite real pretty. But coming from somebody who has spent enough time in the woods, believe me, no, times in the woods to know that it's not always as necessitable as one would think to have a pretty knot. I've seen some of the ugliest things be the most useful pieces of equipment in camp. And uh, that's kind of why I tied that ugly little, whatever you want to call it, uh, pot hanger. And I was hoping that somebody would notice how ugly it was. But that it worked, it functioned. And the reason why I did it so ugly is to let everybody know that it doesn't have to be beautiful to be right. And I'm only saying that because there are some people that down the newer crafters in the, in the, in the woods on, oh man, that's not how you do it, that thing's ugly, you're never going to be anything if you keep doing that. Well, I encourage you to go back in time and find a man who goes into the woods that actually spent time feeding his family or her family in the woods and, and find one of them that, for lack of a better way to say it, really gave two craps about how something looked. As long as it functioned and it was quick to make, they've done it. 
I'm not saying not to take pride in your work, but I am saying don't let other people tear your new work down. Why am I saying all that? A lot of you on this channel already have been through the bushcraft beginning stage. I know that. I'm aware. But more new bushcrafters are finding my channel every day. And I don't want them to be scared away from all this. I don't want them to go away getting doing something stupid because nowadays it's safer to be out in the woods as a young man and doing stuff or a young woman than it is to be in town in the cities where all the rioting's happening, where all the craziness is going on, where all the drugs are being sold. So the next generation is going to be saved by this in my opinion. And I don't want us to scare them away. They're not going to be as good as you. They're not going to be as understanding as you. They're not going to be as hard as you. we got to realize that. Yeah, I'm young physically, but I'm not young mentally. Um, I want us to step up, is what I'm trying to say. I'm calling to arms anybody in this community that has that young buck that really needs to get out and learn. And I want you to, to just bear it, grid your damn teeth, and bear it. And go out and please teach that young man or that young lady how to do this right. Because one day, it's going to matter. One day, we're going to be out here fishing because we got to fish. Spending two nights over the campfire because that's how far we had to walk to get food. Information that is not shared dies with the person that beholds it. Unshared information ain't useful to anybody. If you know anybody that's ever been happy to not know anything, let me know. I don't know. Some fish right here, sorry, I'm watching. I'm sorry if I sound like I'm coming off as a jerk to everybody today on the videos and the channel. But, um, it's largely in part from the fact that there was a gentleman that came on the channel with very little experience of his own and made a fool out of himself. And I'm not picking on you, buddy. I actually like the channel. But I think where you went wrong, I think that what you were trying to say had some level of merit, but you really got to take a step back and read the descriptions of videos. Understand what I'm teaching isn't for the man that wants to go on an eight-day camp. It's for the man or woman that wants to go out on a two-day camp out of a haversack that doesn't need one million pounds of gear to do it because it's two little days. They're taking their son or daughter on a fishing trip. They're taking their friend that just got out of a psych ward or a, one, of my, one of my viewers reached out to me and said their dad just got out of the uh, out of the holding, out of some kind of holding for having PTSD and is finally allowed to come home and mingle. Um, 
that's who this is for. And I want you all to know, if you're watching, you know who you are, that just because you make that ugly thing doesn't mean that dad or mom or your, or your daughters or, or your sons aren't going to look at you as a, as a useful individual. I want y'all to know that bushcraft does not have to be perfect every time. In fact, the little imperfections make it your camp. If everybody came out here and did everything proper, 110%, I wouldn't know whether it was Cold Cracker Bushcraft or my camp or Blackie Thomas's camp. If we were all the same and we all had an exact same way of doing things, there would never be a need for a channel. We'd all be on the same page and the woods would become monotonous and boring, just like our job. Now, where am I going with all of this? Now is the time, guys. Now is the time to to train the next the next group because they're getting into it at a rate much faster than I think any of us expected. Um, I've got friends from work that are my age that have never done this. And they're like, look, man, um, I don't know how to feed my family if things get bad. And uh, if I had to go anywhere to get it, I wouldn't be able to stay long enough to do it. I'd freeze or I wouldn't know how to even start. Well, I'm here to tell you guys, now's the opportunity to make friends and take them out and do stuff like this. I'm not mad at anybody. I sound like I'm a little aggravated. I'm just... I wanted to bring it to light in the community that there are folks that need to take a step back and consider that their point of having a channel isn't to crap on anybody. It's to bring the people that don't know or don't have up to where you are. And not doing that is going to make you a very, <clears throat> very lonely individual when everybody else stops as well. Blackie's been gracious enough to me to share his wisdom. And you're going to start seeing that in my pit, starting with this haversack, of course. That's the best bag I've ever owned, and I've been in the woods for 14 years. I've tried 10 other bags. And I, and I can't even tell you how many backpacks. If I tried to do that math in my head, I'd hurt my little brain. I wouldn't be able to know, I wouldn't even know where to start. Um, I've tried bags so stupid that I even question why I even brought it to bring. And all this, like I said, is being said to remind us that the next generation is coming up and we need to tone down our disgruntled hate for them because they are going to be the future of the channel. They are going to be the future of Bushcraft YouTube. They're going to be the future of Bushcraft itself. The things that will be made will be made for them. Bunch of summer done, and um, that mediocre fire we were talking about coming back into off my little rant I had to I kind of pointlessly had going on there is you don't need a big fire, especially in the summertime. Now I'm right by a running water, and uh, I'm starting to see it pick up, so I've already looked at the water lines, I'm going to be above it. 
Uh, the rain is coming in from that direction, and at some point I'm going to get rained on. I'm really not worried about it. I'm about to get some food in me here. I'm going to show you my setup. And, um, It's good. It's good food. It's, it's simple food. It's watering food. I wanted to get into that. If you're gonna make a pasta in the in the in the woods, if you're gonna if you're gonna make something in the woods in the summertime, you want it to give you carbs. You want it to put some sort of electrolyte and vitamin back in your system, and you want it to be kind of watery. You don't want it to be thick. You want it to be watery because it's gonna be very very easy for your body to break down without making a lot of heat come off your body. And when you want, when you do something like this pasta, you really want to try your best to make sure that when you're doing it, you're getting it just warm enough. You don't want it to be boiling because then you're going to raise your core temperature even more. And uh, that will help you a lot in the, food, in the food world here on the channel. We're going to be getting into that too. Um, this, channel, this this video is kind of choppy and has no real direction. I'm aware of that, but it's been a while and um, work has kind of gotten in the way of doing some of the other videos. I have two passive fishing videos coming. I have a fishing system video coming. I have a video on um, what I pack into new woods. This is very, very well tracked by me. I can tell you where pretty much every rock and nook and cranny is. Um, I also have hardtack and pemmican, Justin Poon. If you're still with me, buddy, if you're watching, um, I didn't forget about you. That's coming soon tonight. I, I had to relieve myself of some of the hardtack I had, and I'm out of pemmican, so that's perfect timing for the uh, for the video. And um, I also had another request. Um, to do more, to show more of what's around me. So in the end, I'll show some clips, and then the next video, I will try my best to, to do that. Um, I got a new bushcraft chair that I'm sitting on now from uh, OPSG Products. And I will tell you that sitting in the sand in one of these chairs is really just not a good idea. So if you're out west and you're, uh, you're in, like, you know, Cali, Maybe it's me, but I've used these chairs before in dirt and harder clay, and it worked fine, but this bushcraft chair is kicking my butt in the sand right now. Um, it works. It's not uncomfortable. It just took me a minute to get to a position in which I could really sit in <laughs> without it. It's already slumped down because the sand under me is just displaced, but... Um, it works out because I'm really close to my food now. But, uh, matter of fact, Ooh, get all up, stretch my little leg legs. Um, because I definitely stretched the chair. <laughs> um, which is good. That means that it's now stretched out to its real form, and I know now what shape it's going to be moving forward. Oh, that, that was that was actually a good decision to get up and readjust it. Oh man. But the chair is holding up great. Um, I didn't expect it to be... I didn't know you could make a, a chair that good. That's what I'm trying to say. I didn't expect it to suck. I just didn't expect it to be so robust. Um, if you mess up the chair, it's because you're you're doing it wrong. Uh, there will be a deeper review after my... This is my first hour sitting in it. So Once I put a few days worth of actually sitting, so a few campsites, a few nights... Uh, carrying it, see how it stretches, see how it holds up, all that good jazz. Um, I'll let you know. I think I put like 30 miles on the 20 or 30 miles hiking with the uh, haversack before I even bothered to start telling y'all about the haversack. And uh, that was funny. I really enjoyed that video making, if you will. And, um, I'm going to ash in there now. I'm going to clean this pipe out as soon as I get home. It's going to 
been a while. Might be time for a new filler too. We'll see. Or a new filter, excuse me. Um, let's get this guy out of the fire. I wanted to touch base on something else too. Um, people were talking to me about their ability to procure good equipment. And that's been a struggle of my own since I was a child. I've always been given hand-me-down gear. This Blackbird Haversack is probably the first thing I've ever been able to truly purchase other than the gifts I've got from my wife with income that I made. And I've really... Oh, and the, and the, uh, the Kephart knife and my, my, my gun firearm of choice, if you will. Those things mean the world to me. Because I made them, I got them, with my own hard-earned money, and, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. What I'm getting at, though, is don't be afraid to get out into the woods with crappy gear. I have had that saw from the beginning of the video since I was 11. I clean it up and polish it all the time. I've sharpened it. I don't know how it's still alive. I paid $4 for it at a, a place called Mike's Merchandise. Or not Mike's Merchandise, I'm sorry, that's here in Auburn. Uh, it's like a something something liquidator store. Had it for a long, long time. Um, that really is cheesy. It's still running. Don't be afraid to get out into the woods with cheap gear. If it works, it works. What matters is your mind. If you have cheap knowledge, worry. If you got cheap gear, use your mind. No one can take your knowledge away, but I can sure come in your house and steal all your bushcraft gear. That's what I'm getting at. Furthermore, with that comment, the most important six inches in a campsite you know what they are? It's the space in between your ears. Because it has the power to make or break your time in the woods or anywhere, any walk of life. That little six inches isn't policed well. You're going to have a bad time. But if you treat it like a muscle, which it is, you work it out, you make sure that every time you get an opportunity to, you learn, you'll be alright. Today I brought some of the cheapest equipment I've ever owned with me. And again, I'm going to touch base on it again, I made a very ugly pot hanger for a reason. The pot hanger worked. This awesome little pot that my best friend Big Red gave me works amazingly. Not a problem at all. Is it my most capable woodsman kit? No. Um, is it my favorite? One of them. This is definitely in my top three. And why do I say that? Well, for summertime, aluminum it really, really, really soaks up heat. It just does. It's it's a very quick... I would wager to say that fire almost passes through it and straight to the food you're cooking or the water. In the summertime, I carry aluminum because I can cook faster. I can boil faster. I can get away from the heat faster. In the wintertime, when I want to cook a bigger, more stable meal, I bring steel. Why? Because it cooks slower, it cooks more even. It's good for better meals. My point with that is, you can have a basic little kit like this one and be extremely competent in the woods. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Those are typically people that don't know what they're doing. It doesn't mean they haven't been doing what they don't know for a very long time. And I say that because 
I've met plenty of people that have absolutely no idea what they're talking about, but they've been doing the thing that they don't know what they're talking about for five or six years. They've just been taught wrong, or they stagnated and didn't learn anything from day one. Don't be that person, please. Not for my sake, because I'm fine. I'm good in the woods. I know what I'm capable of. That's why I take the cheap gear and still have a good time. Still have a good meal in front of me. My campsite is small. It's discreet. It's still comfortable. It's by a beautiful stream. And if something happens to me right now and I can't get out, I'm good for two more days. I'm not worried about it. Not at all. I cannot say that for many other people. So, use the brain. Learn it. Use the cheap equipment until it falls completely apart and then buy new stuff. You'll, you'll appreciate it a lot more. And it'll teach you a lot. It'll teach you how to be a better cook when you do get the nice stainless steel mess kit from the Pathfinder store. It will teach you to sleep a lot more comfortable when you get that nice wool blanket from Cold Cracker Bushcraft. It'll teach you to be a lot more conservative with that bank line you buy from the Pathfinder store or uh, Corporal Kelly's, um, I think it's an Amazon page. I want to say it's this Amazon page. And it'll really, really make you think about how versatile Blackie Thomas's kit is when you take his haversack and can turn it into a knapsack and a, and a heartbeat. All you got to do is just flip it over your back and run with it. Look at that fish. Huh. A couple brim up in here. I know we don't make it out this way until a couple more hours from now. I guess we're trying to beat the rain. I'm sure they know. Fish aren't stupid. Like us. We need love each other. Um, you won that. Mm. Dude. Dude. Oh yeah, bruh. Oh, stickiness in my hand. Almost like I've been doing stuff in the woods, man. I don't know how that got there. These are brand new gloves. I've never done anything. I'm stupid. I'm incompetent. At least that's what I'm told. Uh, maybe I am. Maybe I'm so dumb I don't realize it. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I needed a big car and a 20 pound haversack full of leather that does nothing but exist. And you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's because I didn't make that look like a model as opposed to a functional thing. Maybe it's because I didn't take the extra five minutes to make the pot hanger look pretty. That's why I'm stupid. That's what it is. I don't know why I even questioned that. I should have known. I really should have. I, should have, I really should have known. I can't even believe I get on YouTube and tell you guys things. <laughs> um, there's some people in this world, guys, and I know that I'm preaching to an older audience for the most part, but we can all get something out of this if you haven't already figured it out. Because I know some of y'all hold animosity like wax canvas holds water. Very, very, very well. <laughs> and for a long time. Um, if you try to argue with a stupid person, they will drag you down very, very far to their level. In fact, and they will beat you into submission with a stick. That stick is known as an experience. Don't do that to yourself. Some people are so good at being dumb that they're good at it. Or I should say they're so, they've been dumb for so long that they found a way to be good at it. Don't hurt yourself, man. Let them hurt themselves. I'm going to go ahead and pack up camp. We're going to 
go ahead and uh, get some pretty views in, and I'm going to start heading back to the car. It's supposed to start raining here in about 20 minutes. If you're still here, thank you for listening to my rambles. Um, actual bushcraft is going to start occurring on the channel. Um, I'm going to show you an ugly way to do something every time I'm going to do something in the next video. So, for example, the bush pot holder. There's a lot more to it that I'm not going to tell you now because it's kind of my idea and I've never seen anybody else do it, but it's there to be, knowledge is there to be shared. I don't want anything off of it, but I think you're really going to enjoy what I'm going to do. Um, might I just say goodbye bedroll cooker? It's a lot of money for no reason. Uh, well, for very small reasons. <clears throat> anyway. I'm going to make an ugly version of everything that I'm going to do, and then I'm going to do it really nice in the next video, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, and that's going to kind of be your precursor for the next video coming up past the one that you're watching. Uh, from now on, it's going to be my, 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 my behind-the-scenes look, if you will. And uh, I'm also going to be doing it ugly for a second purpose, not because I'm lazy or because I'm just learning it, but because you may just be learning it. And I want you to know that if it's functional... You did a darn good job because it's better than everybody else that can't do it at all. And I don't want you to be afraid of it looking ugly. So I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to make it look ugly for the whole world to see and chastise me on. And then I'm going to do it pretty. So that you guys don't have to bear the brunt of the bad language that comes with the things not looking beautiful. Stay tuned, folks. Thank you for tuning in if, you, if you're just tuning in now somehow. Thanks for popping in. Let's get cleaned up. All right, y'all. That's where we were just at. Let's go find something a little more beautiful. Anybody know what these are? I'm uh, unaware, but they look like ears. Huh.